One thing I learned when I was living in Israel that I found very interesting was that in the summer, you don't run. <laughs> Seriously. It gets hot. And so, wherever you go, really, you kind of learn to walk. And when you live there long enough, you know, you got acclimated to the weather. But even besides being adjusted to the weather, you also needed to adjust your lifestyle accordingly. I know when I lived in Alaska, I was amazed at how when I lived in the bush, I lived in Hyder, which was a very small town, kind of like northern exposure, so to speak. But it was a really tiny town on the Alaska Panhandle, on the Canadian continent, south of Anchorage. And uh, there's 30 residents, <laughs> at least in the winter, and maybe not that many. But in the summer, it usually expanded to you know 10 or 20,000 people would come through there. But anyways, it. Uh, the thing I learned was that you slowed down your lifestyle because it did no good to be in a hurry. You weren't going to get anything done any faster. Most of the times you needed other things from somewhere else and it wasn't going to get there for a week even. Sometimes maybe a month. So you slowed down and it was wonderful for me because then you began to appreciate more of the simple things in life. You weren't hyped up. You weren't wound up. When I lived in other parts of Alaska, like Nome and just other places, uh, Bristol Bay, the uh, same thing and same phenomenon occurred. You slowed down your lifestyle. It was unique and it was wonderful in a lot of ways because you learned how to be still. You learned how to slow it down. You didn't need to rush through things. As a matter of fact, your friendships became very important in those areas that I lived in that people enjoyed talking to each other. We would meet either in the tavern or the, the restaurant or wherever it may be and you stopped and you talked and you visited for a while. You didn't just say hi and run off. You didn't kind of wave and disappear. You had plenty of time so you spent it communicating. You know, sharing with each other and talking, relating to one another. Funny how we've lost that lots of times when we get into city life or metropolitan life or since the Industrial Revolution has made it able to mass produce things in a hurry, suddenly we do everything in a hurry. We're rushing forward rather than walking and enjoying talking and participating with each other. I think God actually operates in a very slow pace. I think lots of times we rush way ahead of him. We run farther than where he wants us to go. We do things quicker than what he would have us to do. I think we actually outpace what God would have us to do. And we need to slow it down to keep pace with what God is doing. And I think a lot of times what happens is that people get to a location or a destination or get some point in life that they got there in a hurry, and then they have to wait. And then they're just sitting around on their hands, you know, kind of waiting for God to do something because God never said to hurry to get there. I think most of the time that's probably true in every single human being's life. I think we'll discover that God's timing not only is not our timing, and not only is a day is a thousand years, a thousand years is a day like most people like to quote, but that the minute may be an hour. You know, I mean, with God, I think that there's more of a overwhelming or a huge amount of absorption that goes on in God's presence that we really don't understand time at all. I think we just rush it and that we think that we have to hurry because we see sunlight and then darkness. We see sunset and then light. And in those times periods we somehow have rushed ourselves and made ourselves do things in a hurry where we could have slowed down and kept a slower pace. One thing I noticed also about light when I lived in Alaska was that when we had 12 hours of light we stayed up 
12 hours and were able to work those 12 hours. The more light we had, the longer we were able to do those things. And it didn't make us any more tired or weary. As a matter of fact, it seemed as though there was more hours in the day and we got more work done and working two jobs was just as easy as working one job. It was amazing to me. I was totally surprised about how much energy I had and how much strength and vigor. And I think with God, you know, there's a lot to be said about being in the light as He is in the light. We're told that in New Jerusalem that the city will have no need of a sun or a moon, which is really how we keep track of time, but that there would be light in the midst of it that would emanate from Jesus Himself, from the Son of God. And I think that's because there is no time. I think time is only something that limits us and that time is a limitation as opposed to a limitless expression of who God is. I think we'll discover that when we don't operate according to time, then we'll enjoy things more and we'll participate and understand things in a lot better way than we've ever done before. The eyes of all wait upon thee. He giveth to all life and breath and all things. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all of his works. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap. Nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. The same Lord over all is rich unto all that come to all that call upon him. <laughs> I will lift up mine eyes into the hills. From whence cometh my help? Behold, as the eyes of the servants look unto the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God. The Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. If we hope for that which we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. So many times I think that is the Christian issue, is that people think that they have to do something rather than let God do it for them. I think they get this idea that they always have to interfere or interject themselves in something maybe that all they have to do is leave it alone and let God work it out. You know, I always have this new attitude about I don't want to do anything unless I could, you know, sleep on it or I like to say pray about it, but you know, just spend 24 hours thinking about it. Because usually if you wait long enough, things will look different when you've got more information. Sometimes things look different once you let things develop. You know, you kind of let things unfold themselves as God reveals them to you. One of the things that I learned when I was studying the Bible was that a lot of questions, I had a lot of questions that I wasn't content with the answer that pastor would give me, so I would sit on it and wait until God showed me the answer in some other way, whether from some other pastor, some other teacher, some other book, some other study, some other commentary, or some other means with which I knew sooner or later God would show me the answer. And once I had it, then I had no problem. You know, it was like I was content with the answer. And one of the things that I have always established myself in as far as being a Bible scholar is that I waited for those answers. I wouldn't comment on it until I knew the answer. And that I'm confident of where I'm at today is that I made darn well sure that everything that I had a question about, and I questioned everything, I went to God and said, God, you show me. Because, you know, I already know what the commentaries say. I already know what the Bible says. I already know what people say. I know what my own ideas are. But I want to know what you say, and I want you to reveal it to me, because you said that you are our teacher. And so I took the time, and I still take the time, and I even wait on some answers still to this day. But there are most of the answers that most people ask, you know, I've already got the answers to those. Those are easy. I ask the most unusual questions that most people don't think of, and those are things sometimes that I'm still waiting on. But you know, I like that, because when you wait, when you learn to stop what you're doing, to be still. You can begin to recognize that God does work in slow minutiae and in minuscule ways. 
It's kind of like watching some of these plants that I have. You know, I can walk away from these tomato plants and notice when I come back that they have lifted up a branch higher than what it was. I can even watch it track itself with the sun, wherever the sunlight is, it will move towards it. But you know, if I sit here and watch it, I can't see the tomato plant move. It's interesting. Always fascinates me about that. How you get comfortable in what you're staring at, but you walk away from it and come back to it, and suddenly it's changed. Maybe if we learn to let things go more than hang on to them, when we come back to them, God will have revealed something to us. Because one of the things that I've learned more than anything else is that if you wait on the Lord, He will come through. If you don't get yourself involved in it, He will come through. If you let God be God, He will take care of it. The question is, are you willing to let Him do it for you? Or do you really have to do it yourself?